that signal comes through the ionosphere, <coughs> it can actually bend it. And so the timing is going to be off. It's going to be take a little bit longer to get to us than it should have. Remember, we're timing at billions of a second. So that could equal a you know, 10, 20 foot error on our part. Position errors. The Department of Defense does have monitoring stations where they're monitoring the satellites, making sure that they're in the right position. They adjust them for your own information. They've got these cool little gyros inside. They spin them up and they actually use gyroscopic precession to actually move the satellites around in orbit. So that's how they move them around. And then the last one is clock errors. I'm off by 10 billionths of a second. That's 10 feet of error. And so if those clocks get off, you need to be adjusted. Okay? So the FAA said, well, this isn't good enough for us, so they came up with walks. They said, well, all right, Mr. Department of Defense, if you guys can monitor them and find their errors, then so can we. So they came up with So they came up with ground stations. There's about 38 of them right now, all across North America. These 38 ground stations are precisely surveyed and cemented to the ground. What that means is they know their exact latitude and longitude. I know that I'm right here, that's where I am. It then receives the satellite signals and says, all right, satellites, where do you think I am? Okay, it's also preloaded with that almanac, and so it knows on every minute of every second of every day what code should be received from satellite number six. So when satellite number six says, no, I think you're right there, it says, no, I'm not, I'm right here, I'm cemented to the ground, I didn't move. Okay, they send all that information to two master stations. master stations then compile what's going on with the different satellites. Quick example, if I'm right here and satellite number 30 is coming in as bogus, but over here satellite number 30 is coming in just fine, what's the error? Atmosphere? It's the ionosphere. Because it's coming through at a steeper angle here, I'm getting more ionospheric disturbance. Okay, so it actually puts together this package of information that is location specific. So when your airplane picks this up, it only extracts the, the location information. All right, here's my latitude, longitude. Uh, oh, this one applies to me, and it pulls that packet out. And so it actually creates corrections for each location based on where you're at. Sends it to an uplink station. <coughs> The uplink station then sends it to 2 geostationary satellites. What's geostationary? Stay in the same place. Okay, they're right they're positioned over the equator. Because if you think about it, that's the only place you can put a geostationary satellite. It has to orbit with the Earth. Okay, so they're at the equator. One east coast, one west coast. They're actually the same, the same satellites that are used for like direct TV or whatever like that. The FAA, I give them full props. They said, well, we don't want to launch our own satellite. Let's just rent a channel. So they rent a channel off of these satellites and just bounce it off. That satellite then sends the information to the airplane. WAS does not talk to GPS, okay? WAS is simply a active monitoring system that sends us corrections. It does not talk to GPS. The geostationary satellite does two things. First, it sends us the corrected information. Second, it actually acts as an additional GPS satellite. So on your screen, if you pull up, it actually shows up as like, I can't remember the numbers, 135 and 138 are their numbers, and they show up on there as extra satellites. Okay. If I have WAS, I no longer need RAIN. I no longer need FDE. Because that bogus satellite that's giving me wrong information, I've now got the correction to make it correct. So now I don't need that anymore. 
I don't need to monitor myself because I'm receiving active monitoring. So if it doesn't talk to the GPS, then how, do, how does it make that correction? Sorry, it talks to our receiver. Oh. I'm sorry, yes. So it talks to our GPS receiver. It does not talk to the satellites, to the GPS satellites. Thank you. So this is just a real-time correction for us. If the Department of Defense finds an error, they might get around to it sometime this week. <laughs> well, that's not good if I'm shooting an approach now. So this is WAS is the FAA's uh, solution to that. WAS accuracy is within about 9 to 20 feet. Very accurate, vertically and laterally. Okay. The last thing is called LOSS, Local Area Augmentation System. That's what we're going to see is going to replace your Category 3 ILSs. What LOSS does is exactly what we talked about. It actually puts, call them satellites, puts antennas on the ground that act as satellites that also transmit to the airplane. Hence, I can get my vertical position accurate within inches. And so that's where they're going to use that. The WAS is good enough for what we do, but when you go into auto land, these airplanes that come in and land themselves on autopilot, we've got to be that accurate within inches. And so the loss system, because it gives us that bottom feed also, is extremely accurate. Questions on any of that? Well, these, uh, the sides, the stations, the master stations, the blues. Master? Upward. Yeah, it's just an uplink station. There's four of those in the U.S. So if one of the uplinks down, they can send it. So that's how the master station is communicating the satellites. Correct. So it's a redundancy. So that. So. Okay. GPS, WAS, all that fun stuff. G1000. You have to go really quick on this. Who is not flown G1000? Okay. Everybody should be fairly familiar with that. Except for Corey, we'll forgive him. So here we go. This packet tells you, explains through the units, okay? We have all the different units. Go through them really quick. Diagram them out here. Okay, we've got a PFD and an MFD. Whoops. <laughs> okay, PFD, MFD. All of these units, by the way, they're called LRUs. Line replaceable units. The system was designed so that if you have them, you could basically you come back in and you're like, hey, uh, this screen's malfunctioning. If in an operation that actually has backup supplies, you could actually walk out there, pop out a screen, put in the other one, reload it, okay, go. Ten minute downtime. So it was designed to be a system that didn't require, okay, let's hook up the data link and see what's wrong. Now that requires having quite a bit of excess inventory on hand, which we don't. So we plug in the table and find out what's wrong. But it was designed to be a very, very quick fixing system. So if I've got an error, throw a new one in, get it back up in the air, take that other unit, and let's figure out what's wrong with it in the shop without keeping the airplane down. So line replaceable units, that's why they're called that. PFD and MFD, they are units, they are computers in and of themselves. They're also the display screens. So they literally are like a two inch display screen. They actually just click in there. You can, I don't know how it is, but you can actually click them out. They just fall right out like a flat screen and a panel. Got our audio panel in the middle. It's no different than an audio panel on a Katana or any other airplane you fly. Buttons are fairly the same. No real difference there. We've got my GIAs. Those are my, by the way, the G just stands for Garmin on everything. So as you read through this and you're like, oh, a GTX. It's a Garmin Transponder. So Garmin, integrated avionics units. This contains COM, NAV, 
So that's VOR, localizer, uh, GPS.